Young Show. Hello. Do you know the difference between a prejudice and a conviction? You can talk about your convictions without getting mad. Test yourself sometime. Now, our story tonight opens in the editor's office of an English newspaper in England. Well, it was intended to be critical, sir. The Maharaja and his subjects it would look less like a critical comment than a public flogging. Isn't all this nonsense obsolete? Isn't it about time, sir, that these royal leeches and their subjects realize the world is rebuilding itself along more enlightened lines? How long have you spent there, Randall? India? Well, I've never been. I spent six months in Calcutta as a correspondent, 15, 16 years ago. Oh, I didn't know that, sir. The last six weeks I spent in Ganeshwar. I was a guest of the Dewan. He'd studied at Oxford with my grandfather. The Dewan? Prime Minister, really. So I rather jumped at the invitation to visit so little known and remote a state. He greeted me with the warmth reserved for the grandson of an old friend, and then told me the Rani wished to receive me. <laughs> I shall never forget my first glimpse of her. It seemed to me that she was the most beautiful woman that I have ever seen. Your Highness, I have the extreme pleasure of presenting Mr. Alan Chandler. How do you do, Your Highness? Highness has asked me to explain to you as quickly and as simply as I can of the great power you have to help us here at Ganeshwa. I have? To the world, Ganeshwa is, I fear, just another small impoverished Indian state. And at the present time, we are impoverished indeed. Last year, we lost over two-thirds of our crops due to the drought. I'm most sorry to hear that. All our attempts to negotiate a sizable loan have failed. I have read and I've shown your views on India to the Maharani. You write with great power and with the sympathetic understanding I used to find in your grandfather. I will provide you with guides and transportation. You could visit our people. You could write of their suffering, their heroism, of the numbers who will surely die. I'm afraid you overrate my influence. You have the power to make us known in the world, to help us establish this credit. Unfortunately, I leave Calcutta for London in just ten days. I've been given an associate editorship on my paper. I'll be in London permanently. An extension of leave from your paper might be arranged. I'm afraid my chance for promotion is now, or perhaps never. You understand? I do. It may be that someone lives in London of my old friends who might obtain this extension for you. Please. Mr. Chandler has spoken his decision as painful to him, I can see, as to us. Yes, Highness. How long do you have with us, Mr. Chandler? Two days, Your Highness. Will you do us the honor of dining with us tonight? There will be my son, Devas, I, and Pandit Rao. I am honored. You will forgive us, but due to the drought suffering, Her Highness has forsworn all entertainment by dancers for a year. However, my countrymen are not poor in their craftsmanship. There are many objects of artistic interest in the palace you may wish to see. I should be delighted, Your Highness. You'll be shown to your rooms. From the first, I doubted the Rani's real concern with this plan had the one credited to her. Undoubtedly, this curiously remote and beautiful woman was only the unfeeling royal touch to the one Rao's planning. Panditji. Yes, Highness. You have told me of your days at Oxford, England. How you met in your youth the great queen. Victoria. 
It was the elder Chandler who arranged it. When the Queen said you come, you came. And when she said go, you went? The Queen's presence, where one is invited, is in itself a command, Highness. And what am I in my own small state but Queen and Mother? Mr. Chandler is a guest in our state, as you were in England. I myself shall show him our people and their plight. By my presence, I shall command him. But it is not custom. Our people would not understand. Nor do they understand why they must starve. Yet this has become custom in this land of my husband. But, Highness, we must be realistic. Ganeshwa is not England. And you, dear Aisha... I'm not Victoria. I know. But our people's need is real. And I have dreamed that in Devas's reign, there will be lasting help in this dry land of his father's fathers. Highness, these are women's dreams. Why did not Victoria, this woman, build a whole new river called Suez for the comfort of her people? But the English are a great people. Their empire encompasses the world. Yes. But greatness is not in size. It is of the spirit. You have taught me this. I shall. Please, go and take your rest now before dining. For you will have many arrangements to make when Mr. Chandler knows his plans. And he will accept, as I have said. Highness. not in my mind to change my decision, but I had no inkling of the conversation that had taken place between the Maharani and her Dewan. She was no less remote or less beautiful that evening. So after she had issued her naive dictum, I was astonished to hear my own reply. Very well, Your Highness, I shall stay. Oh. I have the deep feeling that your decision may enrich many lives for many years. Including, I pray for your kindness, Mr. Chandler, your own. I pray that you will not be disappointed in the results of my stories, Your Highness. I will do what I can. This, this will to do for us what you can, for which we are grateful. The results will be what they will be. I had promised to jeopardize my coveted promotion on the off chance that a series of stories I should write on an unknown state would create enough interest to help it negotiate a loan. After I came to my room, I came also to my senses. And I decided to discuss this further with Dewan Rao. And when I opened my door, it revealed a rather intriguing scene. I won't! I won't! I hate you! I hate you! Devas? Mother, the stupid man is all throwing me about. Devas do this, Devas do that. They must study your Sanskrit. It is you, my son, who are behaving stupidly. If you do not listen to requests, you must bear with demands. I beg your pardon, Your Highness. May I explain? I understand. You may return to Raja's room. He will be there in a moment. Mother! I have a request to make of you, Devas. Yes, Mother? Call out as loudly as you can. I love you. Oh, Mother! Call it out, please. It is. What we give out comes back to us multiplied. If you fling out hate upon the world, hate will return. But if you give out love, love is given back to us many times. Do you understand? Yes, Father. Go now and ask pardon of your tutor. And do not forget to come to wish me good night. Yes. Chandler, we have disturbed you. I must apologize for being a fascinated eavesdropper. And with a crisis to which we do not normally subject our guests. Has Pandit Rao told you in order to take advantage of the coolness of the day, we start early tomorrow? He did, Your Highness. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm.
I remember the Rani the first week of our journey. We returned each night to one of her five estates, and there were days off for me to write and to send in the stories. By the end of the week, the Rani and her withdrawal from her people at times puzzled, even angered me. I can't understand it. You spoke? Yes. They say these droughts occur quite frequently. Yes. The high mountains to the northeast of our borders shut out the rain-bearing clouds. I mean, since this is an almost certain recurring condition, why doesn't the state provide for it in an orderly, intelligent way? I have dreamed of tunnels of pipes bringing the waters down through those mountains. For within them are the headwaters of the Baroda River. Uh, please forgive me. I had no thought of criticism. I was angry at what I'd seen. When on behalf of others, anger generates compassion. This you will need for your writings. I hate you. I love you. Devas's lesson. Oh, then we do understand each other. So difficult as it should be. unfolding mystery of this lovely woman and by the fourth and fifth week I'd forgotten the rare courage it took for Aisha to respond to a simple personal situation your people have great love for you Rani my people all they have for head of state in this dark hour is a woman I'd venture to say they don't consider that their major problem oh, no but a woman is only a bridge to Nirvana for her husband if she bears him a son. And for the people, I am only a bridge from my husband's reign to that of Devas. May I ask your articles? Have some of them appeared in your papers? Four. They tell me the reader's interest is very high. They ask for more. Does this please you? More than pleases me, dear friend. Strange. You are half mystic, you know. Please do not say strange. For I have striven so very much not to be. Pandit Rao has said, if I make myself understood to you, so will our people be understood. There's so much I want to know about you and your background. I am fifth daughter of Maharaj of Jaipur. He was a remarkable man, I think. And yet, he betrothed us in the old way, very young. I at nine. It is, as you know, a, a great responsibility in our country to have many daughters. And he did very well to marry me to Ganeshwar. I was not fruitful with children. Devas is all. I would like to have had many many daughters to remind me of home in this land that was so strange to me at first. But my husband was content. He was not young and he was not well. He spent much time in Kashmir on account of his health. It is not strangeness you see in me, Alan Chandler. It is that you are the first man I have spent much time with. To have his friend to, to be alone with, except Pundit Ra. There's so little time left. I leave the evening after tomorrow. Yes, I, I'm aware of this. Ram, stop the car. Well, what is it? Remain in the car, please, until I return. There are moments in our lives so badly timed, so shocking in their sheer inappropriateness. Our memories will bear the blow of them as long as we shall live. This was one, the screaming girl, 
the burning funeral pyre, and the ghastly prospect of human sacrifice that shattered the beauty of that afternoon. The Rani was no longer woman. She was queen. And the enchantment of that trip was consumed as if in the fire of her fury. It is a custom no longer permitted in our state. It is called sati. Yes, Your Highness, I know. Forgive me, but you seem ill. I am not ill. I'm tired. It will be good to be home. Our tires burst three times on this, the final night of our journey. And the third time, we had no replacement. So the Rani and I waited by the roadside for the men to return with the spares from the palace just two miles away. This is the most beautiful night I've ever known. It's not the same parched land as in the day. No. The desert flowers give off their fragrance quite impartially in rain or drought. I shall never forget tonight, or today, with you. I shall not forget either. Aisha, I love you. Oh, I know what doubts my saying this raises in you. What a lifetime of training this offends in you, I know too. But all that is nothing beside the fact that I love you. This love for one person doesn't make one feel as if all else were unimportant. Yes. And this is what I feel. I love you. But much else does exist. Devas Pandithrao Ganeshwar. Devas would grow to power and care for his people. Pandithrao could be regent now. I am thinking that. Do you know why you were ill today? Yes, I do. You were ill with the fury of your insistence that a vital living woman not be sacrificed to the memory of a dead old man. Isn't it as unnatural, as sinful, that you sacrifice yourself? Marry me, Aisha. I love you. Oh, no, do not touch me now. I love you. Then come with me when I leave. Make Doan Rao regent. Bring Davas with us for his schooling. I will be his guardian, his father. It is so new a way of thinking, feeling. I will take the next few days to meditate. Do not come until I send for you. I will be ready when you leave. I love you. Thank you, one moment. Check is in order, Your Highness. Thank you. The package is a camera present for Devas. Oh, I'm sure he'll enjoy that, Highness. The check is a fair amount for my jewels? Yes, but you have nothing left. Except those of the state. This troubles me. I cannot borrow from others unless I use first what I have. The money will buy relief till the seed comes to the people. The state jewels are, as you well know, for Devas's bride, the next Maharani. You have no other reason than this, Highness? No other reason that can be discussed now. You sent the proclamation of Devas's betrothal? Yes, Highness. And the one naming you, not I, as regent until Devas is of age? Yes, Highness. Thank you. Highness, may I please ask? No. Do not ask me questions now. Do as I request.
bridge. I am a woman. This is my happiness, and Alan Chandler and I must live it now. Aisha, if you must go, and I still deny that, that kind of happiness cannot sustain you. You will not be as you were born to be. You will be to Chandler and his friends a foreigner in England. This he cannot change for you. You will be an obstacle to that career he first spoke of here so confidently. A hindrance to the power that we have asked him to put to our use. I, I would not hinder him. Better to be a strong bridge to your own people than a weak one to a husband. You will have known so briefly. You will have failed the one. And so you will grow to despise the other. You know what I say is true, Aisha. He does not know this yet. But you will pass the bitter knowledge to him with the kiss of marriage that you place upon his lips. Gee. Help me. Aisha, Aisha. I am helping you, my child. Oh. And listen to me. If you stay, your heart will know sorrow. But it will know, too, the pure love that only your own people and your son can give you. It will know peace and love and the fulfillment of life well lived. Yours was a dream, Aisha. A dream of great beauty. What a dream. Highness. It seemed at times to have all happened so very long ago. I'll rewrite my story, sir. Or chuck it. Chuck it. I'll have a new assignment for you. On the spot in India this time. A rather large irrigation project. Mr. Chandler, the Maharaj is on his way in, sir. Thank you. Well, I'll run along now, sir. We'll talk later. Hello, Uncle. Devas. I'd like you to meet Randall, the man of whom I spoke. How do you do, Your Highness? How do you do, Mr. Randall? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. This is your big day. Yes, indeed. I brought you a present, Uncle. Hmm. Nothing much, but it's the only photograph ever made of my mother during her lifetime. I had two copies made, one for the ceremonies to her memory when we break ground for the great irrigation system. This one I had framed for you. It's good of her, isn't it? Hmm. Taken in the corridor to her rooms. Do you remember? I shall never forget my first glimpse of her. She was the loveliest woman I'd ever seen. Prejudice is the child of ignorance. It's by William Hazlitt. Well, good night. See you next week.